Hello friends, welcome to another Tech Tip Tuesdays, where we give you tech tips the day after Monday. Today we're gonna to be looking at secret managers. Now if you look at this channel for a bit, you'll find that I have a lot of videos saying why you should use environment variables and .env files to store secrets. But there is a much better way. And that is using a dedicated secrets manager. See the problem that we face, particularly in companies, is the distribution of these secrets. So if I need a secret to work on a new project, I need to request that secret, it needs to get sent to me, hopefully securely, but maybe even probably in Slack or somewhere like that, right? Then I have this plain text secret that I store on my machine. Maybe the developer next to me also wants that secret, so I send it to him via email or something silly. I've got secrets on my secrets.txt file, so I don't need to keep requesting them. And this problem we call secret sprawl, right? And it happens internally, and it is a, attackers are always trying to get after these secrets, and it's just a terrible practice. It's like having your credit cards just sprawled all over your networks, right? We don't want that. There are a better practice, and that is to securely store all your secrets in a central location, and in this case, a secrets manager. We can wrap all kinds of authentication around it. We can e even segment out different types of secrets for different people, like production and uh, and test secrets, for example. We can restrict the access that has to these secrets, and no one needs to be sent these secrets, or they never need to be stored in plain text on a machine. That is because we can call the secrets manager in our project, retrieve the secrets, or our application can retrieve those secrets securely, and then we can keep using them. We never actually need to touch the secrets. That's the beauty of it. So secrets managers are a great tool. There's lots of secrets managers out there. However, the one I'm going to be using in this video is AWS Secrets Manager. The main reason is that AWS is the most popular cloud service provider, so perhaps you're already using it, so it's very easy just to get started and get familiar with Secrets Managers. We're going to be connecting to it, and I'm going to be using these secrets in a Python project, and I'm going to show you all the code to connect to that. So let's dive in and get started. First of all, let's take a look at AWS Secrets Manager. So right now on my screen, as you'll see, I'm logged on to the AWS console. I'm logged in as the root user here. And we're gonna go and find the service secrets manager. It's obviously in my recently, but if you can't find it, then you just need to search for secrets manager and click on store new secret. Now there's some options that come up here of what type of secrets. Now, the great thing about AWS Secrets Manager, if you're already using AWS, is that you probably got things like S3 buckets and other types of AWS services. When you store secrets for these, you can implement easily things like automatic rotation. Um, we're not gonna go ahead and do that. We're just gonna go ahead and store just a regular old secret. The secret I'm gonna be using for this video is uh, OpenAI key. So I have a key here and I'm gonna call this one OpenAI underscore test. I'm just gonna use the same name here. Now, of course, we can add descriptions into this and tags. This is really great if you have lots of secrets for lots of different products and lots of different applications and you need to know which is for which, this is gonna be incredibly helpful to add that in. I'm just going to skip this here and I'm also just gonna brush over the permissions right now. We can implement automatic uh, rotation, as I mentioned, because this isn't a native AWS service, we're not gonna do that. You can create your own functions to do that, but it's quite heavy. We'll, we'll, we'll look at that in another video. That's another Tuesday's problem. All right, and moving forward, we just did a review. Now, what's great is they do give us some snippets of code that we can copy. Um, obviously, I'm going to write out my own because it's easier to understand what's happening when we do it ourselves, but feel free to copy this uh, if you feel comfortable. So if we refresh on our secrets manager, we'll see that secret here. We can open this up we can retrieve this secret at any time. I'm gonna store another secret in here. This is gonna be uh, exactly the same, but it's gonna be one I'm gonna call OpenAI Prod for production. Right, so as you can see, we have both of these secrets and we get information. Description, obviously we ignored that when it was last retrieved. Um, and so now we have this secret here, we just need to connect to our AWS account. Now, just while we're in the console, so we can show the whole thing, I'm gonna go to our IM functions, and I'm gonna create uh, a, a new user in here. So at the moment I have zero users, but I'm gonna create one for a developer profile. And so there's certain restrictions that I may wanna put on this account if I'm the administrator for a developer. So I'm just gonna call it senior 
div is what this user is called. Now I have here a group name called developers and I obviously have secrets manager read write privileges in here. So that's what I wanna do. However you're adding your policies, your privileges, just make sure that they have secrets manager read write in there because the developer's going to need them. And we have now created this user. So now we have our user installed, we need to configure this on our system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my terminal here. And you're gonna need the AWS CLI tool installed to do this easily. So you just type in, oh, not CLI. So you just type in AWS. And uh, if you get this command, you have it installed. If not, then install the AWS CLI tool. However, you would usually do that. All right, so in that back in our AWS console, we obviously need to create some security credentials for our user. So we're gonna click on that user, click security credentials, and we're gonna create some access keys for them. And the main one that we want is command line interface. And we have our access keys. In our terminal, all we need to do is AWS configure. Then it's gonna ask us for our access key. Happy days, we have that. Paste that in our secret key. And just in case you're wondering, I have revoked this since publishing the video, so don't try and do that. Our default region, I'm just gonna put US East one to make that easy. And our outfold, I will just leave that as blank. And there we are, we have authenticated ourselves into uh, AWS with our CLI tool. Now we can get into our code. All right, so we're now in our IDE, I'm using VS Code, and I have a little uh, app open here. So let me just do a quick demo of what this does. So this is just a wrapper for using uh, the OpenAI uh, API, and uh, basically to summarize text, right? It's all pretty basic. So if I was to pop open something here, hey, what is Secrets Manager? If I copy some of this, and I paste this in, then, it's gonna bring me back a short summary based on what ChatGPT has provided. Or in this case, <laughs> almost the same length. Uh, so it does something simple. You can kind of imagine, I just wanted to have something real to kind of show you. But how does this manage secrets, right? Because it uses the API. So you can see here um, that we're using the uh, .onv feature to load in our key, which is stored in a .env file. So uh, this might be how you're currently managing kind of secrets, storing them in plain text in a .env file. And it's loading it in and then it's using it. What I want to do is I want to change this. So instead of me having to have this plain text secret on my machine, it's gonna call the secrets manager where the secret is also stored and it's gonna inject it into my project. So as a developer, I actually never need to touch the secret, right? I can just call it by name. And so that's what we're going to do. So in order to do that, I need to create basically another function that's gonna load my keys here. So I'm gonna create a new file and I'm just gonna call it secret load.py. Now, of course, you can just kind of copy, uh, copy code from the internet, uh, <laughs> but I'm just gonna go through all the stages here to connect to AWS, to connect to the secrets manager. We're gonna do it quickly, but I'm just gonna show and explain each part, right? So at least then you know. All right, so we can get cranking now. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import something called Boto3, which is the Py, which is the AWS SDK for Python. So it helps us connect to the uh, AWS services. Uh, all right, so first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna create a function to get our secret. We're gonna pass through this function our secret name, so in a variable. And our secret name, we're gonna create a variable for that, which is going to equal the secret name that we've passed it through, right? And our region name is going to equal, I'm just gonna hard code this, but you can call it from your credentials in your AWS account. Now, we need to create a secrets manager client here. So the first thing is establishing a session, so Boto3, and also our client, which is gonna equal our session client. 
Now, uh, here we need to pass it uh, what we want to connect it to. So we want to connect to uh, so the service name. So we want to connect to our secrets manager. And then we're going to connect to it in our region name, which is going to equal our region name. All very simple so far. So now that we've created that client, we need to have a variable that's going to store our secret when it gets it from the client. So we're going to call it get secret value response. This is going to equal our client dot get secret value. And here we're going to pass it our secret ID, which is our secret name. So the secret name we have defined up here is going to be our ID. That's what it's going to send to the secrets manager to try and get our secret. So next we're just going to create a value, a variable called secret, which is going to store our secret, right? So get secret value response. Pass it our secret string. And so that's pretty much it. Here we're defining what we want to pass. We're creating a, a, a session with our, with our client here. We're getting a, a response from that client, from the AWS client. We're storing that as a, as a secret. We're storing that secret that we've got as a variable. So let's print out our secret and we should be fine. So let's call this function, get secret, pass it in the name which is open API prod, and it should print that out, no trouble. So let's see. And here we have, in a JSON format, our secret. Now, of course, we don't actually want to print out our secrets anywhere, right? This is just to kind of show, hey, we've successfully connected to the secrets manager. We've printed out our secret. So it's in a JSON file, which is very handy, but not handy if we want to use it uh, for, for, not handy for what we want to use it for. So we need to handle this JSON file. So we're going to import JSON as a library here. And directly after we get our secret, so our secret now is going to equal our json.loads secret. Okay, so right now it's all looking pretty good, but we need to load the secret into somewhere. There's two good options here. One is to uh, use environment variables to load it in. Now that's how we handled the secrets in the original version of this app. So I'm gonna continue down that path. Another option, which is slightly more secure, is to use something called Keyring, which is a Python project that helps you kind of securely store your credentials and options, not environment variables. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through our JSON. So we're gonna go for key value in secret dot items. RS environment key equals value. And then I'm going to print these out. Now, I know you shouldn't probably print out <laughs> your environment variables, but we're just seeing that we're getting them all correctly. So get environment variable and then our secret name. All right, ready to rock and roll. Let's see. Oh, one more thing. We need to import OS because we're using our operating system for that to store environment. So this here, OS, we need to import that. All right, let's see if we can load this in. And now we have our key and we just have the key by itself, right? We're not got the whole JSON object anymore. So just our key. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. It's stored as an environment variable so we can actually use that. So now we're just gonna go ahead. Let's get rid of this print and let's get rid of this. All right, let's head back to our main project here. So. Our secret load loads in our environment variables. It loads in our secret from a secret manager, plugs it in as an environment variable. Now here we're, we're dealing with that, so we don't need to change much. All we need to do is get rid of these two lines. So this is saying, uh, this is using a package called .env to load from a .env file. Pretty, probably pretty familiar with that. We don't need that anymore. We do need to import, sorry. So from secret load, we need to import our get secret function. Here, we're gonna create a variable called secret name. And 
open AI underscore prod. And we're going to go get secret, secret name. And then we're just going to change this here to secret name. So let's just run through quickly before, uh, before what's actually happening. So we're loading in from our load secret, our open API prod. We're going in here. It's creating a session with AWS. It's getting that secret from the secret manager. It's putting it in as an environment variable. We're coming back up here and this line is saying, hey, from the environment variables, get the secret name. And then we're gonna be using that, right? So it all should work perfectly. Should. I'm a little nervous because I always forget something, but let's see. Let's see if I got it right on the first try. All right, so far so good. Let's bring back up our text for us to summarize. What is Secrets Manager? Summarize this. Will it work? And it does work. Oh, amazing magic. So we've handled that quick, we've handled that correctly. Now, just back, just very quickly, if we go back to our Secrets Manager, we had two secrets in here, if you remember, API prod, API test. So just to make sure that we're getting everything done right, let's change this to API test. And then let's see what happens. So a text still copied and we are gonna get an error, but I wanna show you. Here it says we've exceeded our current quotas, please check your billing details and for, a, for open AI docs. So basically we've actually, we switched the keys, right? So I wanted it to do something different. So in this case, I've used a key that has no more quota. So therefore it spits back an error, but you can see that this is working. And it's really quick, right? Goes to the secrets manager back. So you no longer need to handle secrets. So if we have a look here, this .env file, we no longer need to do that. It's done, never again, uh, which, is, which is really cool. So I hope you found this uh, helpful. I just want to say one final word here um, before you yell at me at the comments. Of course, we probably want to do more than just this for the function. We're going to want to handle exceptions uh, from here so we can do it. There's all kinds of use cases that maybe we want to build a function for. The idea here wasn't to build the perfect function. The idea here was to show you how we connect to AWS and how we retrieve a secret, right? your use case, how you want to build it out, if you want to add exceptions and handle them properly, of course you should, uh, you can build on that. All this code is going to be in the GitHub repository with a link down below. So please feel free to uh, have, a, have a look at that. Uh, add any comments if you want and let me know what else I should do next Tuesday for another Tech Tip Tuesdays.